I wired my whole house with Ethernet cable for the internet. I'm going to show you how to terminate cable, how to fish cable through the walls, the tools that you might need that would help you along that way, and some tips that I learned on some things that I had to do creatively to make it work here. The attic over my living room is about 40 feet wide and it's covered with insulation and ductwork and it's on an angle and I can't walk across there. So I needed a creative way to fish wire all the way across it and I didn't have a crossbow. So I came up with the idea of using a baseball. This is a practice ball with a hollow core. I drilled a hole, ran the rope through it, tied a knot in it and thought, well, maybe I can throw that all the way across the living room. So to do that, you have to wrap the rope in a way that it's not going to tangle so it won't stop the ball before it gets over there. So you make a loop, and then for the next one you reach under, and you turn it the opposite way, and you alternate back and forth, and then the rope will just fall open without any tangles. Well, you know what they say. If at first you don't succeed, try, 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 try again. Victory. This is the double pull, that, which means I had to pull two lines across this space and I wanted to do it with one shot since it was tough to get the baseball across. So I tied the open end of the wire to a vertical stud over there and tied a loose loop around it where the baseball was and pulled that across. So whenever I cut it, it'll be two lines. As you can see, my attic has about 20 inches of insulation in it and I can't see the wall headers. So there's a trick that I found that helps a lot in trying to locate the tops of the walls underneath all that insulation. Now I knew in the room where I wanted the plug to be, I followed that up to the ceiling. And I took a screwdriver and a hammer and I just poked a hole real close to the wall. And then I used a heavy coat hanger. Stick it up through that hole kind of lodge it there so it stays. Now when I go up in the attic, there's a coat hanger sticking up through all the insulation like a beacon. Now I know where the wall is. So I drill a hole in the header of the wall. And this is the Magnapole. Uh, it's a wonderful tool for helping to fish line. I'm going to attach the wire to that loop and I use a little electrical tape to make sure it doesn't fall off in the wall. Now the silver bullet end of this thing is a strong magnet. More on that in just a second. Now I used a box that's an easy feed box and you want to have enough slack that it's not going to cause any tension as you slide that down the wall. Then you put the bullet end down inside the hole you drilled in the header and you use the other end of the magnet pole, which is also a magnet, go back and forth and it'll click into it and you'll feel it and it'll hang there when it finds it. And you can carefully pull it down. Now this is an internal wall, so there's no insulation. External, they're a little different. I knew where I wanted it, so I got the multi-tool and cut a hole where I wanted that to come out. And then you can just slide the magnet pole right there and it pops out that hole. Yeah, now let me address the elephant in the room. What in the world happened and what is that mess? Well, for some reason, there are a couple of extra two by four stud like things in there. And I managed to get the wire to go down in between them. And it took me a little bit to figure it out and find it. Anyway, moving on. Well, the first thing I wanted to do was put the keystone jack in the wall. Uh, a tip here is you can use the insulation that you cut off the end of that, that you stripped off, put in between those pairs and unwind them to save your fingertips. All right, a keystone jack 
Basically, you just put the wires down in there and punch them in with a little tool. You'll see on the sides there are color codes, and you can choose A or B. B is the more widely used color scheme, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But you lay the wires inside of those slots, and that little black plastic punch-down tool is used to push them all the way to the bottom of those slots. Now, there are better punch-down tools out there, but this is the one that comes with it. It's a little hard to use because it's not great. But once you get them in there, you can trim them off and put that top on. And then I just used a standard Ethernet cover plate, which the jack snaps into the back of that very easily. Normally, I would recommend using a box inside the wall, but I just don't see the point here. Uh, it's a sturdy wall. It's not going to go anywhere, so I just screwed it directly to the wall. Now when you're going to terminate with an RJ45 jack, there's basically a color scheme. And this is the T568B color scheme, which I think is more widely used than most people use. And the idea is to get the wires to go in order, in that order there, and make them flat. And once you get them there, you trim off all but about three-eighths of an inch or so. Make sure they stay flat and that the cut is straight. You slide it into the Ethernet jack carefully and push it all the way to the end. You don't have to strip them, you just push them directly in. And you can look at it and see if any of them crossed and got in the wrong place. Then you can put them in your crimper tool, squeeze down on it all the way, and it'll crimp that end onto the wire. And so it's good and tight and won't come off. Normally that little blue boot would go on before, but I kind of forgot it. And again, moving on. Now there are people much better at this than I am, so Go watch their stuff and see a better view of it. Anyway, how do you know your connections are successful once you've wired them up and terminated the cables? Well, you can use this tester. It comes apart in case you have to test across, you know, like a 40-foot attic, which I did. And the way it works is you plug one end of the cable into one side and one into the other, and it will test each wire from both ends and light up in order. So if they light up in order together, then you know that you've got all the little wires in the right places inside those plugs. My last tip is to label everything. Six months from now, you won't remember where anything is or what it was or why you did it that way. And if something goes wrong or you need to track something down, it's much easier if it's labeled. Hey, I hope you learned something or this was helpful in some way or another for you. I appreciate you being here and watching. Thanks a lot.